what is Biden's message to the American people? And, and at the end of the day, I think that there is an allergy to absorbing this reality among Washington Democrats, which is that the country doesn't want this rematch that they're about to get, overwhelming. Um, and it seems like we're going to have it. You have an 80-year-old president who will be 82, running against the worst and most disgraced president in American history at a time of exceedingly high distrust where the Democratic candidate, as you pointed out, is not running on a level playing field, but yeah. running into the wind against the rain and uphill because of the Electoral College. Yeah. There's every indication that we'll be up late again on election night uh, with this coming down to tens of thousands of votes yeah. across a small number of states and a relatively small number of, of precincts. How, what does Biden need to say to break us out of this? And, and let me just posit this. I'm going to support him 100% if he's the nominee and if it's Trump. At the same time, uh, unhappily, um, I, I, I don't want an 86-year-old as president. I don't think it's great for the country. Yeah. I think that we're in this tired and stale era and what comes next. But if he's going to do it, and it's clear that he's going to, and it's clear increasingly that it's likely to be against Trump, then, then what is the message okay. that bridges the gap, that saves the democracy, that takes us to the edge of a new beginning? So... I agree with you, the country doesn't want that rematch. But let's put it this way, chicken and egg. If Trump is the Republican, if Trump wasn't the Republican nominee, if DeSantis or Tim Scott or whoever it is was the Republican nominee, then I would be saying the Democrats really, really need to think about someone other than Biden. But if Trump is the nominee, then actually I would say Democrats probably are safest with Biden because by definition, he's the guy who beat Trump. He's done it before. He can do it again, just by definition. So in that sense, he's probably your safest bet against Donald Trump because he's the only guy who's beaten Donald Trump. So in that sense, um, and, and looks like it's going to be Trump. So that, that kind of makes sense. The age thing, that's not going to go away. It is a real issue. It is a live issue. I think he can deal with it. I thought he dealt with it very well at the White House Correspondents' Dinner on Saturday. He dealt with it in a Reagan-esque manner. Reagan, of course, famously telling Mondale, I'm not going to use my opponent's age and inexperience against him. Diffused the age issue in one gag, which stole the night and remains one of the great zingers in American debate history. I mentioned it in the book. Um, Biden on Saturday night made the gag that Rupert Murdoch, thank you, 90, whatever something, Murdoch, you make me look like Harry Styles, which was a great line. And it, you know, that's the only way you really can deal with the age issue is to kind of disarm it. Um, but put the age to one side. I actually think his announcement video, Steve, was very powerful. Uh, he struck the right tone. He hit the right buttons. He went back to democracy. He went back to January 6th and insurrection. He brought up, he leaned into book banning, which... Look at the polling. It's one of the most unpopular things Republicans are doing. A majority of, a vast majority of Americans, uh, and even a big chunk of Republicans, are totally against these nationwide book banning attempts by the GOP, by right wing conservative movements. So he leaned One into freedom. So. Sorry? One would hope so. One would hope so. Um, he leaned into book banning and he did it in the context of freedom. And some of us have been saying that for a while. Don't run away from culture wars, lean into them and win them. Win culture wars, liberals, don't run from them. And Gavin Newsom in California a few months ago went out of his way, he put out an ad, I don't know if you remember, uh, in Florida, mocking DeSantis on freedom grounds, saying, come to California if you value freedom. We're not banning books here. We're not banning abortion here. And I think Biden has picked up that theme from Newsom and is leaning into freedom. Reclaim freedom from the right. Liberals were fools to allow the MAGA people, the most censorious, authoritarian, uh, opportunistic people to try and run on freedom, free speech, free whatever it is. So I think Biden's wise to make this about freedom. I think he's wise to make it about democracy. I think he's wise to make it about a choice. You know, he often uses that line, Steve. I love that line. It's not between me and the almighty, it's between me and the other guy. I think it's very uh, important. Elections, elections, are, elections are a choice. Last Indeed, thing especially in America, two-party system. My big concern though, Steve, is the rhetoric isn't enough. 
actions have to match that rhetoric. Americans are savvy enough to see someone who keeps making promises but doesn't do anything once they get the mandate, once they get the power. And that's why it so disappointed me that Joe Biden hasn't taken stronger steps on the Democratic front. Uh, I would like to have seen him come out much more strongly on some of these issues. Um, hopefully he will now. You know, there was a time, uh, there was a moment when, do you remember when the story broke that Donald Trump had had COVID at the debate and he didn't share it with the Biden team and he Absolutely. put Biden's up. And they asked Joe Biden, a reporter asked Joe Biden, what do you think about that? And he goes, I've got no comment. I try not to think about that guy. People thought, oh, what a wonderful, I thought that was a bad response. I don't, you know, he's not some irrelevant person you can ignore. If this was a foreign country, you would see Donald Trump as a coup plotter in exile, in Mar That's trying exactly. to bring down the government. And you would Dangerous expect- man. Yeah, this idea that you could just ignore. No, not only is he trying to undermine your president, he's back now, isn't he? He's back in no other country in the world. I went to the UK for my book tour, Steve. People did not believe me in England that Donald Trump will be the nominee. They couldn't believe it. They said, no, 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 you're wrong, man. It must be DeSantis, right? No, Donald Trump's the favorite still. How can it be Donald Trump? People can't get their heads around the fact that this guy has left office, insurrection, and yet he's still a viable contender. He's one of the three most likely people to be president in January 2025. That Democrats allowed that to happen, I'm sorry, partly, as did prosecutors.